In this video, I'm going to give you a suggestion for a possible improvement to a fallout shelter. I thought of this because of watching footage of government and VIP bunkers from during the Cold War. They have uh, lots of documentaries on that stuff out there now. Uh, the easiest for you to find will be documentaries on the Greenbrier Hotel. Unbeknownst to even the staff of the, the facility, the Greenbrier was a fallout shelter for Congress. They maintained a small staff there from the Department of Defense. They had their own little meaning nothing department you know, no one really knew what they were supposed to do. They were just there. Well, unbeknownst to the staff, they were maintaining the underground portions and the back side portions of the hotel that were meant as a giant fallout shelter and backup capital building for the U.S. government in case of nuclear war. Now, when you look at videos and read the books and pamphlets from FEMA and its predecessor, Civil Defense, basically in those for a home shelter, you came in wearing the same clothing you had during the attack, and you're supposed to wear that for weeks at a time before you change if you have any at all. They did not tell you to brush off to remove fallout particles or anything. Compare that to with like at the Greenbrier. They showed that uh, when Congress and their select staff or interns would show up, the first thing they did, they stripped. They got rid of all clothing, all jewelry. They then were put through showers. The showers would hit them from above, it hit them from the sides, and hit them from down low, and they were supposed to scrub thoroughly in order to remove all fallout particles. And they did that before entering the shelter proper. Well, what I have here is an idea on a modification you can do on a home shelter so that you can get at least some of the same protection that they have. Now, if you already have an in-home bomb shelter, this could be something you can add on to the outside. If you have not built one, this could be something you could consider adding to the plans for when you do the construction. I have not personally built one of these. I do not have a fallout shelter at my current location. I do uh, want to move sometime in the next few months here. And if we find the correct type of location, the correct, correct type of building and stuff, one of the first things that's very high on our priorities list for construction or improvements is construction of a fallout shelter. And my feelings on that are it's better to be prepared than to get caught without it when you need it. I actually thought of this when Hillary was running for president because it was pretty obvious one of her major priorities was war with Russia. And that would go nuclear very, very quickly. That has not changed. The Cold War may be over, but the nukes are still there. And both sides would be using them right away. Or at least the Russians would in a retaliatory strike. We may attack first conventionally, but they will retaliate with nuclear. Now, how this works, this is the exterior of the shelter, of your shelter area. This is the entrance to your shelter proper. An attack would occur. You would come in through the exit here. Close the door behind you. Along the wall here, you should have some brooms, some brushes, and a couple shovels. Now, you take one of you, or one at a time, you take the brooms, take the brushes, and you wipe down, you get all dust off of yourself. You, you brush off everything. That dust and possible fallout particles is left in this entrance area. Once everyone, when a person is cleaned off down here, 
they move down to here and they stand and wait once everyone is clean you open up the next door and you go in to the undressing area when you're inside here you remove all your clothing all your jewelry and stuff put it inside a covered trash can it should be lined with a trash bag preferably two and the bag should drape over the top of the cans a good ways uh, the reason for that is once everyone has disrobed in that stuff all everything is tossed inside here the bags get closed up and they get tossed out in here for now and then the door shut behind you obviously now you'll have a bench in here which would help you with removing of your pants removing of your shoes and that stuff some people have troubles dressing and undressing unless without the help of being able to sit down so include a bench these cabinets here those would contain your uh, NBC suits your ice packs and that stuff and additional gas mask filters and that that is for when you would leave the shelter but those would be contained inside the cabinets here or at least some of them now after you disrobe and you are completely naked you got nothing on not even uh, flip-flops no underwear nothing you move into the next part through a curtain here and that is the shower area one at a time each person goes in and showers up they need to soap up you know head to toe bottom of their feet they need to scrub everything between the fingers between the toes between your butt cheeks everything you should also have some type of shower brushes hanging on the walls inside here too those shower brushes would get tossed inside the trash in here which would get closed up and tossed out because it's possible that those brushes could contain fallout particles now this shower should have its own water system it should not be connected to the water system for the shelter itself it could be something as simple as a 55 gallon drum or it could be a couple of them linked together it could be a large water tank it should have some type of gravity fed system leading to possibly some type of uh, shower hose and an attachment in here that you can use to wash yourself off the floor should kind of slope down to the center or one of the corners and there should be a floor drain underneath that floor drain you should have a it should be lined with like a 55 gallon drum or a stack of them the capacity of this drain should be larger than how much water you actually have in the storage for use in the shower one of the things that uh i wrote up as an email on this months ago if this is a 55 gallon drum down here should be at least a 55 gallon drum with one of the ends removed the open end down to the ground to the dirt because that's where the water will seep away for the most part but you should also have holes drilled in the sides of the barrel not very large ones but large enough that the water can seep through the side like a giant sieve any fallout particles that get washed off in here will collect in the bottom of this uh, drainage catch and the water would get drawn away through the dirt after you wash up you should have probably a shelf with some towels in here somewhere you should dry up and then probably toss the towels also at that point is when you could enter the shelter put on a fresh batch of clothes that are already waiting in there now this is not a time where modesty should be taken into consideration it's a survival thing so men women children you're all just cycling through as quick as you can getting washed up okay 
So don't worry about, oh, you know, this person can see this, this person can see that. You're going to be living in very close quarters for weeks, possibly a couple months. So don't, don't let it, you know, control your every thought right now. Your thought at this point when you're entering the shelter is survival. And the first stage of it is getting as clean as possible. Now, if you're entering the shelter before the nukes have actually hit, then you can bypass the showers and probably go straight in. But if nukes are going off and your indication that we're under nuclear attack is you get the bright light and that you see the mushroom clouds, you definitely should go through disrobe and decontaminate before entering the shelter. Now, if you should get dispose of your trash outside of the shelter. So the trash should collect out in this entryway and then say once a week or so, someone will suit up in their NBC suit, mask and all. They will go out here move the bags down near the entrance, open the entrance and toss them outside, close the entrance back up quickly, brush themselves off, come in here, disrobe, and depending on how much dust they see coming in through here, they may want to toss the chemical suit at that time or possibly wash it down. If it's a uh, Russian or Comblock suit, they were rubberized, you could probably get away with spraying off the suit and then reusing it. But NATO ones and US ones were cloth covered. Those, if they come in contact with fallout particles, should be gotten rid of. One way to get around that would be covering the NBC suit with wet weather gear and then taping the seams of the wet weather gear, which you could do with duct tape and then you would go through, clean off the suit and that stuff, wash it off. Remove the suit and all that, put on clean clothes or whatever is in here, and then enter your shelter. I do not have an idea as to how much something like this would cost, how uh, manpower intensive this would be, but I figure it this way, if you're building a fallout shelter, you know, what's it going to be adding an additional week or a couple days putting something like this on there? I will put some links in the description of the video to some of the old civil defense videos on building fallout shelters. I've watched a few of them. They're not too bad, but the shelters they recommend are extremely tiny and I would consider them very uncomfortable. Now, this is something that you really should consider. I wouldn't brush it off. Joel Skelson has said for years, and he still does, that the U.S. is supposed to be set up for receiving a nuclear attack in 2019-2020. So we still have a year to two years before that would occur. Well, better safe than sorry work on the fallout shelter now and stock it and since you're building the fallout shelter anyway put in the decon area to increase your chances of survivability. Now this uh, shower out here is only meant for decon this would not be used for your normal personal hygiene you should have some other means for that inside your shelter area this is only decontamination so the, once the water supply and this is used up, it's used up. This shower's done. But this shower really should only have to be used when you're first occupying the shelter. After that, you're using your chemical suits and all that, which will decrease your chances of exposure to fallout particles. As long as you have your brushing off out here, you know, you're leaving a lot of that out in this entrance area it's not getting into the shelter uh, you're probably wondering why I say to have shovels out here 
the reason for that and the reason why I have this door here opening to the inside is if the structure you're underneath the building should happen to collapse you may need to dig or tunnel your way out so you should have some type of tools out here so that you can cut your way through timbers dig your way through masonry or whatever material could be blocking your primary entrance but every uh, fallout shelter should have a primary entrance and at least one emergency exit for should a uh, building collapse over the top of it because of a strike now for all my engineer brothers in the patriot and militia movements always remember essayance